Hey guys, today I will show you how I fly a 1943 Stearman as a co-pilot. The pilot in command, Brian, would introduce us to the airplane in a quick interview. And after that, we are off for thrilling aerobatic maneuvers. Barrel rolls, loops, hammerhead, and uh, springs. Just hold on to your seat. We look forward to the flight. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. Absolutely. So uh, maybe introduce yourself a little bit. Uh, my name is Brian Rosenstein. Um, I fly the Stearman here out of the Concord Airport in uh, near Charlotte, North Carolina. How long have you been flying a Stearman? I've been flying Stearman since I was a teenager, actually. Um, I started out when I was 14 years old. Wow. Just uh, found myself at the right place at the right time yeah. and um, started taking flying lessons in Piper Cubs and Stearmans when I was 14, 15 years old. Very lucky. So compared to a single wing, like a Piper or a Cessna, yeah. um, the Stearman is a very unique airplane. It is uh, a challenge, uh, much more so than I found in most other type of airplanes. Um, being a tailwheel airplane, having the steering wheel in the back makes a big difference. Um, yeah. It's a, a very unstable airplane on the ground, so you need to have very quick feet in order to keep it going straight. Yep. Um, being a biplane just gives you a sense of nostalgia. You know, this airplane is uh, manufactured in 1943. It's not a replica, so right. this is exactly the type of airplane a cadet in World War II would have trained in, so there's a nostalgic factor to flying the airplane. Yep. Um, having open cockpit makes a big difference too. Uh, the airplane is, gives you a lot of physical feedback when you're flying it. Yep. Uh, some feedback that you might not get from an airplane that's enclosed. So that's uh, very different than a Cessna or a Piper. So it, it's, uh, it's an all around totally different experience. What's special about the Stearman? So the, the Stearman is a uh, kind of an iconic airplane. Um, it was uh, designed in 1934, went into production in 1936 yeah. as a primary trainer for both the Navy and the Army, and became such a successful design that a couple of other countries took it in as well as its uh, primary training airplane. Um, it's widely known in the aviation community as just being an iconic airplane. Um, you go to Oshkosh, you go to Sun and Fun, uh, when you pull up to the ramp at generally any airport, People instantly, especially pilots, recognize and respect this airplane because of its history. Yep. Um, and it's got a reputation as being a bit of a challenge um, and being a tough airplane to learn to fly. So um, it, it's an easy airplane to fly, but it's a very difficult airplane to fly well. So yeah, it really has gained a respect and an admiration amongst the aviation community as, as uh, just being a, a really good designed airplane. What about the uh, key performance metric? The plane uh, has 220 horsepower yeah. and fully loaded. It's about just under 3,000 pounds. Um, the airplane can go up to almost about 10,000 feet. However, being open cockpit um, and being relatively underpowered for how heavy it is, the airplane takes a long time to get up there. And as you climb, of course, the temperature goes down. Yeah. So it's really more of a comfort factor of the temperature and the wind chill going up that high as opposed to the airplane getting there. So um, I've had the airplane up to 8,500 feet on a cross country before and it was cold. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's more of a limiting factor than altitude uh, in most cases. So, uh, and being 220 horsepower, it is not a high performance airplane in practicality. Although the FAA considers it high performance because it's got more than 200 horsepower, yep. uh, it cruises along, along about 85, 90 miles an hour. So it, it, I tell people, especially doing loops and rolls and aerobatics, that this airplane's like taking a school bus to the Charlotte Speedway. You yeah. know, it, it, uh, it'll go around the track right. and it does it really kind of slow and gracefully, but it is not an extreme performing airplane. After talking about all the performance metrics, I know you guys can't wait to see how it flies in real action. I'll leave the personal part of the interview after the flight. Now let's go for the sky. While Brian does the pre-flight, I'm sitting in the front seat studying the cockpit. A typical central stick with a red intercom button, red push to talk button, fuel selector, now exceeding 1900 RPM play card. The rest is similar to the airplanes I fly, except that I'm wearing a parachute in case of airplane structural damage during aerobatic maneuvers. Time to fire it up.
Because the big nose up engine blocks the front view, which is typical for tailwheel airplanes, Brian needs to use peripheral views and taxi in an S curve, left and right of the taxiway, the yellow line. He said he was once asked by a passenger if he was drunk. Now Brian gave me the control to get a feel. I did some turns, but mostly straight and level. The control stick is very sensitive. I used just thumb, index, and mid fingers to avoid over control. Obviously, Brian had some good time relaxing in the backseat. After 10 minutes, we are outside the class Bravo airspace. Now it's time for some fun. Before each aerobatic maneuver, Brian does clearing turns and I also help identify any nearby aircraft. Since the 220 horsepower engine doesn't generate enough airspeed for the maneuvers, every time Brian needs to dive a little bit to get up to 120 knots. This is the first one, a barrel roll. Now let's switch to the front view. A barrel roll means 360 degrees rotation around both longitudinal and lateral axes, just like a combination of uh, roll and loop. Brian told me he put two and a half G's and I'm glad my body feels good. Look at a big smile on my face. The second one is a loop, quite straightforward. You pull the control stick back until you complete a 360 degree lateral axis rotation. The key is airspeed and rudder. Sorry for not being able to record the intercom audio, otherwise you could hear my excitement loud and clear. The third one is an aileron roll, which means a 360 degree rotation around the longitudinal axis. This action is clearly viewed from the front and back camera angles. Here comes the last one, a combination of a hammerhead and barrel roll. Hammerhead means a quarter loop until the nose pointing straight to the sky. And when airspeed drops to a critical point, use rudder to turn the nose to the ground and finish another quarter loop until level position. Since the finishing speed for the hammerhead is enough for the barrel roll, why not do it together?
That was so much fun. When I thought we were heading back, Brian asked if anything else I want to do as a bonus. Then I had an idea. I've never experienced a spin before. It would be great to feel it here. Spin is an aggravated stall. Since the outer wing stalls less than the inner wing does, therefore more lift and speed, the airplane will rotate around the inner wing, making it a spin. It's a red zone for pilots without aerobatic or flight instructor training. Even though Brian didn't finish a full 360 degree spin, I've already felt dizzy from the side load. After so much fun, now time to head back. Brian let me fly pretty much the whole thing until I beam the midfield. To type, Brian still has a story about Sweet Caroline to share in the end. sharing the airplane yeah. um, any opportunity I get to share this with people and that's why I do this I I could put the airplane in the hangar and go enjoy it once in a while by myself but yeah. I get so much enjoyment out of people coming out and seeing the airplane yeah. um, learning about I mean th this is the airplane that trained the majority of World War II pilots right so it's like a time machine yeah, it's really it is. neat it is. It is. Yeah. I like the uh, the name there as well <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I when I bought the airplane, it didn't have a nose art or a name on it. Okay. Um, I had about four or five ideas that I really liked. Yeah. I already had the girl and the, and the design done, but the name I didn't have. Right. And at the time, I was helping to coach my son's Little League baseball team. Yeah. And so we were on the field uh, between innings, and the guys in the sound booth were playing this song by Neil Diamond. The song came on, and everybody started singing along and cheering. and. And it occurred to me that's a great name for an airplane. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that it matches with uh, the location. It does too. Well. Yeah. And you and the air, the other thing is the airplane after World War II. Yeah. The airplane was sold off to the civilian market uh, okay. as a surplus airplane, and yeah. in 1948 it was bought by an organization called the Civil Air Patrol. Okay. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. I was part of it before. <laughs> yeah. So was I. I was a cadet, yeah. and yeah. so the airplane came to Charlotte. And yep. from 1948 to 1956 was based at the Charlotte Airport yep. um, for the Civil Air Patrol. So now that the airplane's back in Charlotte, I feel like uh, putting the state on there and giving her the name kind of fits. Yeah, it's a beautiful name, you know, um, and overall the beautiful paint job. Thank you, yeah. The, the airplane is not historically accurate as far as the paint scheme goes, actually. Okay. Okay. This was a very popular paint scheme when people started restoring the airplanes back in the early 80s. Yep. Uh, a couple of guys painted theirs like this, based on some some biplane fighters of the 30s. Yep. <clears throat> but in World War II, this would have either been all silver, but most likely all yellow. So the fuselage oh. would have been yellow, the tail would have been yellow, the struts oh, yeah. would have been yellow. Look, pilots um, who are not familiar with the tail wheel or you know the classic of the airplane. Yeah. If they want to get into it, any suggestions? There are a lot of people around that do um, tailwheel endorsements. I do tailwheel training in this airplane. Yep. Um, I do steerman specific checkouts in this airplane. Um, you can find people around the country that'll do it. Um, sometimes it's in a Champ, sometimes it's in a Cub or a Cessna 170 or something, but uh, you can find some people to do it. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much for the uh, interview. My pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you for watching. If you like my channel, click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.